How was your weekend? I hope it was pretty well. Or went pretty well. Um, my weekend, pretty good. I actually had some time to relax, so that was nice. But let's go ahead and get started. So yeah, today we're going to work more on the Twitch Interactive card memory or concentration type game. And um, the main uh, gist of it is there's going to be a bunch of cards on the screen and um, they'll each have like a Twitch user's icon on it. And then they'll be covered up and players have to try to remember which two tiles have the same icon. And then um, they'll submit guesses and uh, the people who guess the correct pairs the most will um, get more points and then they can spend points on things to affect the next game. That's the idea of it. Right now we just have a bunch of colored squares, but it's still pretty early. So, um, let's see. I was working on a system to take care of guesses, and I think I have the guess command worked out. So if I say guess A1, A2 in the testing chat, I should get a not, imp a not implemented exception because it's trying to call this systems update, which we haven't implemented yet. So that's what we need to do now. Uh, looks like I finished all the various jobs. So yeah, this is um, Unity's um, entity component system. And if you're not familiar with that type of programming, um, basically you just try to work or think of like the data as the main part of programming instead of the alg or I guess the instead of the algorithm, I guess is one way. And instead you just use these systems to convert data between different forms that you would use instead of having like the algorithm control the um, flow of the program, you want to have the data control the flow. And that's kind of the main idea at a high level. But basically, so we have a bunch of jobs and the cool thing about these in Unity is that they can run in parallel on different threads. So they're a lot faster than um, a normal um, code. And what you want to try to do is have a job that just does one thing and, um, and make like a bunch of bite-sized jobs. So we have this job called the valid filter worker um, takes in a bunch of guesses, which the guess, let's see. So the guess includes data on both the tiles chosen, um, the user, and then a timestamp. And this is just so that if there's two guesses for the same user, we want to take the most recent one. And um, so it makes sure that the guesses, the tiles are valid, meaning that they're inside the board's um, dimensions. Um, and then we want to make sure that it's not a guess for the same tile, because obviously if the tiles are both the same, then they have the same picture on them, but that would be an invalid guess. And so we return true and then Unity will keep track of which indexes we return true on and we'll store them in another array. And then this worker takes all the guesses and tries and throws out ones that are duplicates that have a later or an earlier timestamp. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. And then this one, yeah, we have then we have to sort the list that Unity has built. And then here we take all new guesses and then all guesses that were from previous frames and we want to throw out old guesses for this that have the same user. And then this one. Um, oh yeah, so we basically have to keep track of which guesses are going to become um, the most recent guess because we have to add a special um, component to it to flag flag it to the game. 
And then this guess, I mean, <laughs> this job takes all of the components that need to be tagged and destroyed and then actually does the work. We don't want to put this in a separate one because um, it's a little slower. So if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have it in a separate job, it uh, tends to just work a little better. Okay, so that's kind of what we're working with. So the data we're going to need is we're going to need some information about the board and then basically a lot of information about both new and old guesses. Let's see, first we'll need the board dimensions. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. First, to, in order to do that, we're going to need to get all the board components. So I have a board query up here, which I defined it find on the onCreate method, and it will just collect all entities that have a board component. And in order to get into that data, we just will call two component data array. And there we go. Why is it not like that? Oh, I have to give it the component type that I want it to find. Okay, and then new guess data will be the new guess query and two component data array tile guess. Okay, and this one I'm going to do something a little fancier with. I'm going to get a job handle. So this will be new guess data handle. And this basically tells Unity that it can't uh, wait to fill this array with data until another thread. And we'll just use this data handle. <clears throat> That's my voice. Use this um, job handle to tell these workers to wait to run until after this um, job has completed. So I'm going to do that. A bunch of stuff here. We also need to get the um, guess entities. Oh, I forgot the S at the end. Okay, so we're going to need to do this with the old guest data as well. Okay, so one thing I know is that since we're getting all these um, entities, we're going to need to dispose of them at some point. Or, I mean, we're creating all these um, native arrays, and so we need to dispose of them ourselves at some point. Um, this, These arrays are all used in jobs, so they'll need to be destroyed when the jobs are done with it. But the board array, I can go ahead and just dispose here because the only thing we need is the board dimensions. Um, which we can get, which we'll just pass to this worker when needed. Um, okay, so in order to dispose of the rest of these, we can, um, since they're just native arrays, we can tell Unity to destroy them when we're done. So let's see, when is the last time Okay, so the problem is this tag or destroy new guess, I think, is going to run parallel with the verified duplicate. Let's. Um, so I can't. I'll need to make another dummy job just to dispose of this native array. Or I can just pass it here, but that sounds. Kind of weird. This is private struct dispose new guess entities worker. 
This is just going to be a really simple job that doesn't actually really do anything. So we want to have this deallocate on job completion. So that Unity, that's the tag that tells Unity to dispose of this native array when we're done. Oh, so yeah, it's not an override, I just need to implement it. But this job won't actually do anything. Okay, so that's when the new guest entities will get deallocated. Um, the other ones can all just get deallocated here. Oh, well, actually... Oh, okay, no, that's fine. So, yeah, so we have the new guest data. And then old guests and old guest entities. I'm going to write a comment here so I'll know why we can't deallocate this one. Uh, do not deallocate here. Um, needed and tag or destroy new guest worker. Um, which I guess, let's see. Put this on a new line. which runs in parallel. Okay, so that's good. Basically these jobs need to run in sequence until we get here and then these two can run in parallel and then when both of those are done we can run these two in parallel. So we'll have some branching dependencies here, so I need to try to make sure I get it all correct. So the board dimensions this is boards zero dot dimensions. And then we want to pass the new guest data. Okay, and so since this is a parallel for filter, we want to either schedule append our schedule filter and what these do is that append you just pass a list and then tell it how many times to run and then it will just add every index um, that passes the filter onto the list filter you pass it a list that already has values and then it will call execute for each value in the filter and if it returns false it will remove that value from the filter so at first we can just call a schedule append and do we did I already build? Oh no, I didn't build the list yet, so... List int, and this will just be... I'll call it guess filter. Or I guess it should be validated guesses. And then I need to tell it the number of times to run, which would be... Um, new guess data length and then I can tell it how many times like this inner loop batch count is um, basically the way that these parallel for jobs work is that unity will do a for loop and run it a few times on a thread so if you have a small number here unity will basically create more threads or this job will run on more threads um, if you have a larger number here, it will create less threads. So there's a little bit of overhead in creating a new thread. Um, so, but trying to worry about it too much here um, is probably a little premature. So I'm just going to put four, which is just some random guess. Well, um, later on, if we see that this code is running slow, we can adjust it. Okay, so this job can run once new guest data has been filled. So, and then also the input dependencies, so we need to combine them. Okay, um, so that's fine. 
So now after this runs, the validated guesses will have some values in them. So new unverified duplicate filter worker. This needs just the guesses. Uh, hey, the Oppie Gamer. Long time no see. How have you been? Yeah, I've uh, had to take a pretty long break. But I should be back. Okay, so yeah, nothing else here. And now we'll schedule filter, I think. Yeah, so this takes a list that already has values in it. So validated guesses. And inner loop batch count. Again, I'll just pick four. And this will depend on the dependencies just from valid filter worker. Because since this has already ran, we know that new guest data has been filled. So we can just pass the dependencies on through. Okay, so now it needs to sort the verified new guest list. Um, so again, it will just be new. We'll just create this worker and we can pass in the, okay, I don't really like that I call it validated guesses here, but then verified in there. So I should probably rename it. I guess validated actually is a better term because we verified would mean like we'd make sure that they actually meant to guess it. You've been good. No problem. Kind of stressing with uni work. Oh, I know how that feels. I'm at due in about an hour and 15 minutes. It's some Java work. Okay. Yeah, that brings me back. Yeah, so I, I'm sure I had a lot of... Um, last minute Java projects as well, but I'm sure you'll be able to do it fine, so. But yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for asking. Okay, so yeah, this is a pretty simple job. All it does is sort the validated new guest list and Okay, so it really just needs to run right after this other job. So again, we can just pass the dependencies on through. And then after... Okay, so now we get to run this job and then this job in parallel. Okay, so I'm going to name these dependencies. So this will be... Um, um, sort validated dependencies well, maybe I should name it up here oops I accidentally pressed copy there um Okay, so I guess we'll start with this one. Verify duplicate filter worker. And yeah, we have to pass in quite a bit of information. So I guess this... Yeah, so we need to run these two in parallel, and then they need to join up again, and then run these two jobs. So I kind of need to keep track of the dependencies separately. Um, so I'll call this... Uh, duplicate check... Um, dependencies. Okay, so verify duplicate filter worker. Okay, and what does this need? I'm going to close some of these classes so I can scroll down a little bit easier. Okay, so basically it needs the new guesses, new guess entities, and then old guesses and old guess entities. And then the verified list and then a oh yeah a queue for objects that we want or for entities that we want to destroy 
which I haven't set up yet, so let's do that now. D, destroy, Q, and then I know I'm going to need another um, Q for entities that we want to tag with the validated component, so I'll go ahead and create it now. Oops. One too many E's in there. Okay, so new guesses will be new guess data, new guess entities, and then old guesses, and old guess entities. Um, and then the validated list, which I call verified there, so I think I'll change that name again. Um, and then what's the last thing? Um, oh yeah, the destroy queue. What's it not like? Oh yeah, we need to pass it as a parallel writer. Which just means that we can write, I guess, write to it in parallel. A bunch of different threads can write to it at the same time. And we'll schedule this. We don't have to call any special schedule. Um, it's a for each. Oh yeah, it's a parallel for. Okay, so it's a parallel for defer, which means we need to pass it into here a list, and Unity will use that list to know how many times to run this. So it'll run it once for every um, element in this list. And then again, we have to pass it the inner loop batch count and dependencies. Okay, so it's going to need both the sort validated dependencies and then the rest of these dependencies up here. Let's see. Job handle bind dependencies. And the new guess data handle new guess. So this is going to be kind of big. The problem with this is that if you combine too many dependencies at once, it, I think it creates some garbage because it has an argument array. Oh, I pressed tab in the wrong spot there. Okay. What's it complaining about? Is it saying... Yeah, so Unity won't even let you pass that many at once. Okay, so let's just combine some dependencies up here. Remaining data depths. Okay, so what if we, we already know that the new guest handle is finished, so we can just do new guest entities and then old guess Oops. okay yeah, there we go and then the old guess handle and the entities handle okay and then down here we can just sort our Tell it to run after the validated dependencies and then the remaining data dependencies. I hope I'm not saying dependencies too much. Okay, and then down here we got to run after a new guest entities is complete. Yeah, so this will run in parallel to this one, so in order to set that up, we just need to not have it rely on these dependencies returned from that worker. So this will be um, tag dependencies. And then it has a tag queue. And then what else did it want? 
the verified list. Oh, and it does need to destroy Q as well. And again, I'm going to rename this to validated instead of verified because I think validated it just makes more sense. All right, and then we'll call schedule. Okay, so this one is we can't run it in parallel because it has to. How come actually? Oh, yeah, because it has to go through this list sequ sequentially. Um, yeah, this code is kind of the code I'm scared that I messed up the most. Probably have to do quite a bit of testing. Okay, yeah, so we just have to pass the job handle. Which will just be combination of the sort validated dependencies and the new guest entity handle. Okay, so now what we can do is combine these two handles and then these last two jobs will run once they're complete. Okay, so I'll just call this Q's belt dependencies will just be a combination of th this and that. Okay, and so again, these next two jobs can run in parallel, so they'll I'll need to keep track of their dependencies. Dependencies different are separately. And this is just a simple worker that destroys this um, array list. And what's the last one? Oh yeah, the command buffer worker. Let's see, everything's happening out in front of my window right now. I hope it's not being too noisy. Okay, so the command buffer dependencies is new command buffer worker. And we need to pass both queues. And then it just needs a command buffer, correct? Yeah, we don't have a handle on that yet. So let's entity command buffer system. Okay, and then in order to get the buffer, we just call buffer system create command buffer. And we'll schedule this to run after the queues built dependencies. Oh. Should have a T there, not a D. Okay, and so whenever you create a command buffer and have it run during a job, you need to tell the buffer system to wait for this job to complete before it tries to run the command buffer. So what you can do for that is you just call the buffer system and tell it um, add job handle for producer, and we'll just pass it the command buffer dependencies. Okay, so now we will clear or dispose of the board array. These other arrays are disposed of by the jobs, and we'll return job handle dot bind dependencies for the dispose and the command buffer dependencies. Okay, so that neatly ties up all these jobs. Um, okay, I think this is probably one of the biggest 
scheduling things I've done in a while, but this is a pretty complicated um, setup. Oh, hi, Nubinator. Great to see you again. How are you doing today? Okay, so I'm just trying to see if I've forgotten anything. Oh, which I did. I need to create these data structures and uh, clear them here and then also dispose of them later. So validated guesses, clear, destroy queue. These should all be empty, but I'm just going to go ahead and clear them. It doesn't really matter. Glad to hear it, that you're doing well. And I can just create them up here and I'll set the allocator to persistent, which just means they'll stay around in memory forever. Well, until the game closes, then I'll dispose of them. Now, if it is persistent, you do need to dispose of them yourself. Like, Unity won't automatically dispose of them when you um, restart the editor or something. Well, I guess, technically, if you close the editor, they will get disposed by the operating system, but if you turn off play mode in the editor, they will stick around and Unity will keep complaining to you about them. So, um... You can just um, override the onDestroy method, and then you can call dispose here. This is always called when the game is... Um, closing. And I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead. Oh, I've left this running the whole time. But let's go ahead and test it out with just one command and see what happens. I'm probably going to need to write some code to um, test out more complicated, um, I guess scenarios because it'll be hard for me to test it by typing in commands. Okay, so we actually got an error, which is not super um, surprising. Okay, so the previous scheduled job, tile guest verifier, verifier, writes to the native array, verified duplicate, destroy queue. You must call complete on the job um, verify duplicate filter worker before you can write to the native array safely. Um, okay, so let's see. Verify duplicate filter and let's call filter worker. Let me see about that. It's complaining about the destroy queue, but it's a parallel writer. So I should be able to. Maybe it's this write only that's. that it's complaining about. Actually, yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I think that tag is not right because when you write to a queue, you technically have to read it because you have to see how long it is. Ooh, you found some books on shaders on Amazon you'll think you'll get. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, which ones? I actually might take a look at them, too. Okay, let me see. Was that the only thing? Yeah, so the verified duplicate filter worker writes to the destroy queue. I must call complete on itself before you can write. Oh, also, I just realized I forgot to get a handle on the buffer system. I'm kind of surprised that Unity didn't complain to me about that. So when do I want... Let's see, this runs at... in the simulation phase. Um, I'll just have it do its work at the begin initialization phase. I don't know if it really matters. So in order to get another system, we just call world. Uh, 
look at existing system, uh, begin initialization, entity command buffer system. Oh, also, yeah, I need to tell this system when to run, so I'll tell update and group. Uh, type of, I guess this can run in the presentation system? Or no, 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 not presentation, I meant simulation. Should be fine. Physically based shader development. And practical shader development. Okay, yeah, thanks. I'll take a look at them. I just realized, yeah, my auto mod might have deleted your links, but I can still see them, so. Yeah, I'll take a look at those after the stream. Okay, so it's, uh... Oh, okay, so now it's going to complain to me. Since the game had an error, some of the um, native arrays didn't get disposed of. And it's going to just tell me about it every frame. So I'm going to see how long I can ignore that um, before I have to restart the editor. So we have another problem. Is it the same thing? Verify duplicate filter worker writes the native array. Destroy queue, you must call. Why is that happening? Because the whole point I thought is that it's a parallel writer, so it should work in parallel. Maybe I'm See, does it tell me where? Okay, 79. Oh, it's just telling me about the worker itself. Or the constructor. Um, Okay, so I guess it actually figures this out when I schedule it. Um, yeah, because I'm calling as parallel writer. Is it getting... Let me see. Where... Okay, so it's giving me this line. Oh, is it saying that two different jobs can't use it as a parallel writer? Let me see. So let's see, parallel destroy queue. Maybe what I need to do is just call as parallel writer once and then pass that to both jobs. That could be. Maybe it only lets you create one parallel writer at once. Um, verify duplicate worker writes to destroy queue. You're trying to schedule a new job. Okay, tag or destroy, which writes to the same native array. You must include... Really? Because I ho thought the whole point of the queue was that they could run in parallel. Okay, well this... Yeah, this error at least gives me a better handle on what's going on. Yeah, so now it's saying that the Duplicate filter worker. Oh, which also I should rename. Because I'm changing this to validated instead of verified. Um, this validated worker writes to the destroy queue. So trying to schedule this tag or destroy worker 
which also writes to the destroyer queue at the same time. Um, it's saying it's invalid. Um, which is a little weird to me. But maybe the way that Unity has set up the queue is that you can only write to it from one job, even if it's running in parallel, and it doesn't want you to write to it from two separate jobs. Which, I guess, is what's going on. Okay, well, it's a bit of a shame because now we can't run this in parallel, but that's okay. I mean, if I really want it to be able to write in parallel, I could create a separate queue. Um, do I want to do that? Because I could have another queue and then pass that here as well. Or I could just let them run sequentially. Um, I'm going to go with the less complicated option and just have them run sequentially for now. Because if I want them to run parallel, it's not that difficult to fix that later, so... Um. So I guess I'll keep... Technically, we're going to have unneeded variables, but not like it really matters. So all I have to do to make these run in, ver in parallel now is just have this worker depend on the duplicate check dependencies instead of the sort validated dependencies. Um, so technically, it doesn't even need to have the new guest entities handle either. Um... So I think these can still run in parallel. So yeah, now if I want these to run in parallel later, I can just shuffle around some dependencies and create an extra queue. But if this job is a bottleneck for the program, we might think about doing that. But for now, I'm just going to go with something simpler to um, move on. Okay. okay, so now we're actually getting an error that has to do with the the jobs themselves and not with Unity's bookkeeping. Okay, so it's saying that the entity does not exist. So I'm kind of thinking that what's happening is something is being told to be disposed of twice. The so entity command buffer was recorded in tile guest verifier and played back in there. Oh, okay, well, this doesn't really help much. I was hoping it would tell me when exactly the entity was added to the command buffer system. Maybe it does. Oh no, there's no line number. Okay, so it's saying entity does not exist. How will I debug this? So I'm thinking what hap what's happening is that something is being added to this buffer twice to be destroyed, or it's being told to be destroyed and tagged at the same time, which either one of those is a bug. Um, let's try something. So if I put this first, then what happens is it will be tagged and then immediately destroyed. So we know if just switching that around causes the error to go away, then it's being tagged and told to be destroyed at the same frame, which shouldn't be happening, but... Okay, so that is what was happening. If I look in the um, entity debugger, do I see any guess entities? Okay, 
that's board, and these were all tiles, and these are all pictures. Okay, so yeah, the guess is not there anymore. Okay, so I think I need to go into debug mode and print a lot of log messages. So unfortunately, whenever if you want to ever use debugging, you have to turn off burst compiling. So I'm just going to kind of do that globally in here. Oh, I guess I can leave this one on. So turning off burst compile will make these jobs all run quite a bit slower. Um, but that's what you've got to do. We can just uncomment that later to fix it. Okay, so let's see here. kind of have a feeling that it's this code that's getting it wrong because I feel like this here will be really easy to get a bug. Um, although at first glance it looks fine, but... Okay, so what I want to do... Is bool valid... So if it's not valid, I just want to, well, I just basically want to pass something. Or say something about the status, so, uh... Oops, I put the dollar sign inside, it should go on the outside. So, guess, um... Okay, so I'm going to need to make a two-string for that. Okay, so now this should print out if this guess is valid. I'm just going to make a two-string method. So user guest tile one and tile two. If I want to, I can convert them back to algebraic notation and then at timestamp. So it's not actually a time, it's kind of like the order that we are receive these guesses. Okay, so I'm just going to test that out and see how that runs. I don't think we'll really find out any useful information, but maybe the just make sure the two-string makes sense. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. It is valid, so at least we know that part is working. Now here we'll make sure if, or we check to see if, um, I guess, is a duplicate from the same user but timestamped later, so. Check index um, is a, uh, is overwritten by guesses oh, I meant to say I okay and then I guess otherwise we'll just won't even debug anything so then we sort them um, I guess I should make sure that sorting them correctly I don't know if a string builder will work in a job. Well, let's try it out. If not, I might have to go the old fashioned way of just appending strings.
Actually, yeah, I know this won't work because you're not you can't use C sharp objects in a job, I'm pretty sure. Maybe that's just for burst compiling. Okay, well let's run let's just do that and see. I know this is unused, but see if it gives me an error. Yeah, it's saying that the constructor is not supported by burst, but it's not being burst compiled. I guess it's still used. Oh! <laughs> okay, I didn't turn that off. I even said that you can't use debugging while you're burst compiling. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Okay, so I guess it does work for now. That's good to know. So let's just end, um, guess, sorted. This doesn't actually tell us much information, but I just want to make sure that this sort is working right or how I expect it to. Just put a space, that should be good enough, and then debug log string builder to string. Okay, so now that that's done, and then here I guess um, we'll also want to say if a guess has been overwritten. That'd be old guesses. I is overwritten by a new guess. Oops. Okay, and we do destroy the old guess entity, so that's right. And then here, again, so this is the part I'm a little worried about. So first, let's see. So it's not even past the data. Which is going to make this a little bit difficult to debug. Okay, so I guess I will just pass in... Okay, now I'm going to have to... I want to pass in this new guess. Oh, also I just realized I don't really need this job anymore since... Since these jobs have to run in parallel, I can just add deallocate on completion. Okay, so we really only need this uh, for debugging. And I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm just gonna comment this out for now. Okay, so. is stored, I guess. And then is disposed. And then this last one should also be... Oh, let's see, I just realized... Um... Yeah, also, okay, I just found a bug here. The second last, like if um, it's the last value in the array, it should um, okay. Yeah, so basically, yeah, I need to figure out how I want to say this. So basically, imagine in this array, the first index is two, and then the last index has a value of six, but there's more. Like the native array here for all entities goes up to 10. 
So we basically miss destroying everything after the last index in here, and also bef everything before the first index. So how do I want to do that? Okay, let's see. If let's say I equals new guess entities dot length minus one, then we'll just pass new guess entities length minus one. Otherwise, it will be the last value in the array or the next value in the array. And then, so I'll get rid of this part. And so now I need to destroy everything before the first index. Destroy equals zero and Okay, so that's fine. And then also <clears throat> this is brings up another error that if there's nothing in this list and we don't even want to run it. Well, I guess we do, we just want to destroy everything. So if validated new guesses length is zero, then we'll just destroy everything. I think I have to have a branch for this. Okay, let's... I'm gonna extract this out. Or I guess I'll call it destroy because that's what the queue is. So I need to do... Okay, so basically I just need to add every entity. Um... Okay, and I guess I'll make another method. Tag. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of complicated, but... Alright, and I don't need to test anything about the command buffer, I don't think, because it just does what it's told. Okay, um... Yeah, so I actually can remove this code. I'm just gonna delete it because we're only gonna need it again if we parallelize this again. And then I need to pass in the new guess data here, just for testing. Alright. Yeah, so we took out all of our fancy parallel jobs now, but... It's alright. Probably better to do it like this at first, to make it simpler. Less things to worry about. Okay, so user guessed zero, and it's true. And then they sorted it. Yeah, so there's only one valid, so that's correct. And then user guess is overwritten. Okay, so it overwrote itself here. Um, not 169. Wait. So how did it already get added to the list? I think maybe the entities or the query is... Oh, this is the problem. Okay, I was creating duplicate arrays here because they're both reading from the new guest query and not the old guest query. Okay, yeah, so there you can see how one little silly mistake like that can cause a lot of issues. But I did find a bug here, so 
Not complaining too much. Oh yeah, also here I need to take out that minus one. Um, and I should probably comment this. So, F um, I is at, or is the last index set second V to the length of the entity array. Okay, so I actually did this wrong as well, so this should be, uh, oh wait, no, that's right. But this, okay, yeah, I'm getting confused here. This is looping through the validated new guesses list, so if it's the last there, so this was right. Okay, found a lot of bugs right there. Um, in fact, that code could probably use some commenting because it's, like I said, it's a bit of a complicated algorithm. It doesn't really self-explain itself. So let's see. So user guess is true. And then, yeah, so it's just stored. So let's look in the entity debugger. to my music right there, but I'm sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, it stored it and then it tagged it as verified. So if I have another guess, um, let's, I don't know, B1, B2, <laughs> see what happened. Oh, we got an error, but is there even, oh, I think the error is actually, so if the entities change while you're looking at them, Unity doesn't handle that well. So. Okay, so it put the new tile in there and it deleted the old one. So I think it's actually working fine. This is the debugging is messing up. Oh, okay, so here we're handling guess by debug. And then, yeah, so user zero guess one five is true. And then it sorted the index. And then user zero guess zero four is overwritten by the more recent one. Okay, so that is working. So now, in order to test this, we need to try to deal with multiple users and then a whole bunch of guesses received at once. So I think what I'll do is make a little system that will just inject a bunch of guesses into the um, um, entity list and then see how our verifier, verifier deals with that. So let's call it the guess tester. And this will just be a mono behavior, but I'll put it in the right namespace. So what is it? Uh, Twitch memory. Oops. Game logic. Or test. Okay, so on update, I guess whenever I, oh, yeah, whenever you um, change namespaces, it has to think for a bit. So if I press a key, um, uh, I don't know what, I guess just let's start with one. Um, debug log, injecting guess entities, just so it knows I'm doing something. Okay, so let's make a separate function to actually do the work. Oops, I went one too many braces outside. Inject entities. And this is another really good thing about um, the data-oriented programming or um, Unity's entity component system, is that if you want to test something, you can just add a bunch of entities into the system and see what happens. You don't have to try to make some contrived um, setup where you um, are input a bunch of commands yourself. 
Okay, so in order to add an entity, I need to get the entity manager. So we can just grab it. Why is this not working? In Unity Entities. Oh, because, okay. Yeah, I'm, it's thinking that's a variable name. So entities equals world active entity manager. What do I want to do? Let's just um, test one user for now. Um, zero. And let's add in, I guess, 16 different guesses. So our entity equals entities dot create entity. Oh yeah, I guess I should make an archetype. If I can spell it. Uh, entities dot create archetype. And so what do we want here? I guess just a tile guess. And just pass it through there. Okay, now we just need to set the data. Uh, set component. Okay. Um, so for tile one, I mean, the values here don't matter a whole lot. I want them all to be valid. Um, yeah, so see, we have 16 arrays, so I guess I'll just pass I and then our 16 positions because it's 4 by 4. And then I plus 1 odd 16. So it'll always just guess consecutive ones, it doesn't really matter that much. And then the user ID will just be zero. And the timestamp needs to be sequential because it should save the most recent one. Oh yeah, and it's complaining here because I need to convert this to an unsigned integer, which is just as easy as casting it. Okay, so that's all we have to do. Um, but I'm actually gonna have us, I'm gonna rename this because I might want to have several different test scenarios here. So let's inject mass uh, from one user. Okay, and I'm going to restart Unity just to get rid of all that, those trash. Um, um, I guess native arrays that got stuck in the system after the crashes earlier. Or not crashes, but exceptions. As far as I know, there's no way to clean up unused memory um, unless you do restart the editor. That would be kind of a nice thing if they would have some way that you can just press a button to clear all native arrays, but maybe it's not as easy as that. Okay, so it's looking good. Now if I... Oh, well, nothing will happen now because I haven't created the object yet. Okay, let's set it at zero, zero, and call this guess tester. Okay, so I'll need to remember to turn this off when I'm done with it. Now if we press 1, okay, so yeah, a bunch of stuff happened. So user 1, yeah, it says it guessed them all and they're all valid because they're all inside and not duplicate. And so now it's saying 0 is overwritten by the one that stamped 1. 
Yeah, so they're both all being overwritten by the one right after, which is right. Okay, and so the only one that's still valid after all that is uh, 15, which coincidentally is also the stamp and also its index in the list. Okay, so now it's saying it's disposing all the other ones and then just storing 15. So it looks like it's working. Let's see. Okay, so that one's still in there and I don't see any others. Yeah, we can look here in the... Over here, um, entities are stored in something called chunks. And they contain all the different entity data with the same, um, I guess, archetype, which means the same components. So we don't see any tile guesses left in here except for this one. So that's how we can make sure that this is the last entity with that component. So that worked really good. Um, I'm going to test... I guess I'll leave this. Let's test... Um, inject invalid guesses. Um, so we'll just... First, I'll pass a few with bad tiles. Okay, the timestamps will be kind of messed up, but I think it'll be okay. Um, let's pass check. Tile 2 is out of bounds. Oh, we really only need to pass one of each of these, so... Okay, now let's say if this is too large. And then if tile 2 is too large. And then if they're equal, so if I set them both to zero. Now it should just delete all these. And this will run if I press key two. Um, oh. Like, yeah, I need to change the method. And also, injecting these and mass from one user. And this will be invalid guest entities. So we should just delete all of these. So it's invalid. Yeah, so false, 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 false. And then it sorted it, but we can see there's nothing there, so that means that there's no... Um, yeah, the list is empty. So then it disposed all of them. Okay, so that's good to see. So now... Let's see... Let's run this inject from one user twice and see what happens when there's a value left over from before. It should delete it. Okay, so... If I run it one more time... Okay, the problem is the stamps are kind of messed up because the timestamps should actually be sequential. Um, let's look in the entity debugger and see what happened. Well, there's still only one tile guess, which I guess is good. But that doesn't actually test what we want to see. I guess I'll need to have... A timestamp value that I'll keep track. Okay, and I'm just gonna be a little fancy and do that. Oh, except it won't work because it's a uint. If I just make this a uint, will it work then? Okay, that's good. So 
So yeah, this is um, I really don't like doing this, but since it's for testing, I think it'll be fine. But in real code, I think it's kind of confusing. But what's happening here is it's going to increment the value in timestamp, save it, and then return that value. So you can kind of get away with doing that all in one line like that. But again, it's kind of um, confusing. So I wouldn't recommend doing it in production code. Okay, so we are generating all from one user. The timestamps are still working. Okay, and let's see. So yeah, here it says the guest stamp 15 is overwritten by the one stamped 31, which is the one that passed through the previous filter. Kind of. Oh, okay. I was going to say what happened to the one stamp 16, but I was looking at the wrong index. It's and it's disposed of there. OK, so one thing, it doesn't say that the stamped 15 was disposed. But I guess that's just kind of, oh, that's because I didn't have that log. So I think it's um, implied by this log file or log string. And okay, there is only one entity in here. They're gonna show it to me. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah, with a timestamp of 31. So it did save the later one. I'm gonna run it one more time. Oh, get out of there so it won't give me an error. Oh, it still did. But yeah, it's just the um, entity debugger. And I did update it again with timestamp 47. So it's still... Yeah, it's keeping the most recent one, which is what we want. Okay, so now let's do some testing with multiple users. I don't really think this will be that much more complicated. Don't really need to inject like multiples from the same user, but maybe that would be useful. Inject um, from many users. Okay, so I'm just gonna pass the same tiles, but. Let's pass three from the same user, which is probably a little overkill, but... And zero. Let's do 16 users. I gotta pass the user. Oh right, and now I need to um, have a way to run that code. So we'll run this on the three key. Let's see how this works. All right, so I'm going to press key three. OK, well, no errors. That's good to see. So user zero, guest, zero one, and they're true. User one, guest, bunch, and it's true. So yeah, all those would be fine. Yeah, and it's going to go up to user 16 or 15. And then it says user zero. So the stamps from the, the earlier stamps are going to get overwritten, which is right. and the good thing is that the users aren't overriding guesses from different users. Okay, so now there's a bunch of indexes and they are sorted correctly. Sending. 
Okay, so that's disposed, disposed, stored, disposed. Okay, so it should dispose of two and then store it. It looks like that pattern is happening. And there should be a bunch of guesses now, one for each user. And they should all have two, three, because that's the last guess that was sent. So I'm just gonna check. User one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay. So on the surface, that seems to work. Let's um, run it again. So yeah, we got a ton of stuff that's happening. I'm looking to see if it overwrites. Yeah, so, okay, so the previous ones from before are getting overwritten by the, the ones that were all received this frame. And if I go here, we should still have one for each user. Okay, now it's different, so 15, 14, 13. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay. So it's still one for each user, but for some reason it's sorted differently. Not that it actually matters. Okay, so it seems like it's working now. Let's, um, I'm going to test one more thing, and I'm basically going to do random user and a random player. So inject randomly. Oh, I just said the same thing. A random user and um, I guess a random timestamp because for now they've all been in kind of a pattern, but that might not be how it um, is in the actual game. Okay, um, so this is the same. Um, let's. How many do I want to inject? Let's do like a hundred. Okay, we'll need our random equals unity mathematics random. Um, let's just do a random seed, I guess. So that'd be you and system date time. Now, millisecond. So yeah, we'll just seed it based on the current millisecond of the system clock. Okay, so we want the... Well, the tile doesn't really matter, but I guess to make it more authentic, I'll do random here. So we want a next integer, minimum 1, max 16. I could insert some invalid things here, but... I don't really think it matters. Okay, and then the user. I want to have a relatively small number so that there'll be collisions. Um, so let's do... So we're going to do 100. So let's put 32. And then the timestamp. I don't want to have any equals. So I think I'm just going to like let it do the whole range of integers. Oh, that doesn't work, does it? To, oh, I think the actual issue was that I was doing a unsigned. Can I just say next unsigned integer? Okay, you can. Okay, yeah, so the main thing is we just don't want timestamps that are equal um, because that shouldn't actually happen, but I don't really want to write code to guarantee that, so. I'm just going to give it a huge range of integers to make it unlikely. So this will run if we press number 4. Yeah, I think this code is important to test because it's going to it's actually um, going to be pretty important to the game, so knowing that it works right uh, will be I guess give us a good foundation to build other code on top of. Okay, so a bunch of stuff has happened. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so this one was actually false. Oh, because it's an equal uh, guess. 
which is fine. Uh, so now there's a bunch of stuff is being overwritten. And even though I did, we got 100 at once, it didn't take too long to run. Which is, um, actually it was pretty much instant, which is good to see, because it's doing quite a bit here. Um, so yeah, user 24, guess something, and then it's overwriting. Okay, and then there's a bunch that are left over. I bet this is 30. One, two, three, four, five, five. Yeah, so it is 30, which makes sense. We, or I guess it should be 32, but because I think we had 32 users. Okay, so now it's going to dispose a bunch and store. Okay, now the wrong problem here is that it's going to be difficult for me to make sure that there's not duplicates. Also, I guess, hmm, let's see, I should probably like look through here and make sure that, okay, let's see, so this one is stored, um, the last, does that match up, 3, 2, 5, 2, okay, it seems to be correct, because yeah, we want the actual thing that's stored here to show up. Um, so we have 5, 8. And then also, well, I was going to say we want to make sure that the timestamp that's overwritten is always less than this one, but uh, we pretty much, I mean, all that is is a, um, a less than comparison, so we don't really have to test that too rigorously, I don't think. And it worked fine in our other um, tests. Maybe one thing we could do, um, which I'll do that, which might be a little bit easier to test. Let's see. Um, where was I? Instead of just passing the timestamp sequentially. is we want to randomize the order that the entities are um, added into the system. I wonder if there's an easy way to do that. Because here, like, the latest timestamp is always the last entity that is entered into the um, system. So I wonder, although that's probably how it will be in the actual in production, I'd kind of like to test if they're not. Um, the int and start. Do like this, I guess. Okay, and for anti equals zero, I less than sixteen. So we'll add that and then just increase timestamp by sixteen. And then we'll just pick a random value from the list, which is not an easy way to do that, unfortunately. So, equals, oh yeah, I don't even have a random sequence generator. Okay, so stamps are next integer um, from zero to the link or count. 
Oh, I actually need to store the index. Index. I know I've written a extension for this that can get a random index out of it and then remove it. Probably should include that in this project. Okay, and then stamps. Remove at. Stamp index. Okay, so now we get a random timestamp out of the list and then delete it. And then this should actually be... Well, I guess we can just leave that. Oh, and again, this should be an unsigned integer. Okay, so kind of a crude way to just randomize the order that the timestamps are received. So I think after this, um, oh, well, I'll actually almost be out of time, but I think I'll be, uh, I mean, you can spend forever running and making these little tests, so you kind of just have to decide when you're satisfied. Okay, so yeah, see now the timestamps are more randomized. Okay, one is overwritten by that, and so I need to look here and just make sure, or here, and make sure that 15 never appears. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't. Yes, yeah, so then it disposes all of them, but keeps the one that's stamped 15, even though the it's at a different index. And if I look. Okay, so there is a bug because this timestamp is 12 and it should be the one that's 15. So why'd that happen? Oh. Huh. Dizio stamp. What happened there? Because it seems like. Was this like processed in a different frame? That's 15, 0. Oh no, it's right there. It just didn't get deleted. Okay, and so... Okay, so yeah, it didn't get deleted, and then it was processed again the next frame. So I'm glad I did that. Let's see. I'm gonna clean this up. There's too many files open. So something is wrong here, I guess. Oh, I, I know why. So I need to actually remove that negative or the subtraction because this is a less than. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this algorithm here is, yeah, as you can see, it's just very prone to errors. I kind of knew that writing it, but I'm not sure if there's a better way to deal with it. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so yeah, we run through. Okay, and so let's find the one that had the 15. So this one was stored. And it looks like it didn't run again, so. Okay, so yeah, that one's still there. I'm going to run it more time and see what happens. Did it run? No. Oh, now it's complaining about the debugging. Um, let's just try this again. Okay, um, and then check in here to make sure that the Entity has timestamp 15. If I run it again, did it go? Oh. Yeah, okay, so I did mess up. See, it's it's gonna keep on running and with the max timestamp of 15. So I guess um, it is still working. 
because when I run it again, you can see the tile guess will change. Is it? Oh yeah, so it is going. I can see the message number is increasing, but Wait, does it always have ten and eleven? That seems kind of weird to me. Okay, no, there it's nine and ten. Okay, just making sure. So what I need to do is actually here I need to add the current timestamp to this. Accidentally press copy again in the wrong spot. Alright, so just press 1 and it ran. So now it has timestamp 15, so if I run it again, it should switch. I got a timestamp 31. Seven. Okay, so yeah, it is working now. And it's keeping the most recent, or the biggest timestamp. It's a So it's like multiple of 16 minus 1. What is it right now? 79. I don't see anything bigger, so yeah. Okay, so I think it's pretty much working. Uh, like I said, you can spend forever making these unit tests, but at some point, you have to be satisfied. Um, I don't really think randomizing these timestamps, well definitely for the invalid ones that wouldn't do anything, and then for mini users, I don't know if it really matter. Um, let's try to make more valid timestamps for the random. Um, they insert randomly. Um, let's have a variable here. So this will be num entities. Let's set that to 100. And then when we grab the timestamp out. Oh yeah, I complain that's not an unsigned integer. Why do I have so much trouble spelling that every time? Okay, and then we'll just pass um, that stamp. So now these timestamps will make more sense. Um, also, this should be number of entities, not 16. Okay, so let's just test this real quick and see if there's any errors. Basically, I'm going to look to see if it runs multi- like if it doesn't dispose of everything. So it's a, a four. So since there's a hundred things, it will be a little difficult to tell. Um, basically, I'm gonna see if it like restarts the algorithm a second time. It doesn't seem like it. Stored, dispose, stored, stored, stored. So there should only be like one sorted index list. Let's just kind of scan through there to look for that. Okay, so that, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so it's going to be kind of hard to tell if there's duplicates for a user because there's 32 users. So I think I might make the number of users a little smaller. Let's make it so that there's only four users and see how that is. If I wanted to, I could make a verifier that would actually check that there's not duplicate users, which might be worth it, but I don't think I'll have time tonight. 
So yeah, it's deleting a lot. And then let's see, there's only four values in the array now. So we have user three, one, two, and zero. So yeah, that does keep one for each user. And if I run it again, all of these should be overwritten. I'm gonna, well, for me, errors. So two, zero, three, and one. Okay. So yeah, there's one for each user again, and it. They did change it, you can tell, because the timestamp is a lot larger. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't seem to be doing any errors. The only thing we could test is that if we have more users we could write something that would. It'd be nice if you could like sort the entity um, debugging screen by some fields. So that way we could just sort by user and then see if it's missing any, but. One, six. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could tally this down, but that's kind of boring. So maybe I'll do that off stream, but see any duplicates at a glance. But yeah. So I guess I'll go ahead and end the stream now. Because it's um, yeah, about time for me to go and I don't really want to start something else big. What would we do next time, I guess? Um, so I think we've tested this pretty well. Oh, maybe I can turn back on burst compile. Let's do that real quick and make sure everything still works before I sign off. So in order to do that, I need to first comment out this all these debugging. Um, I guess I can comment that out because we don't need that anymore. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could have done this a little better and put all these debugs into like a compiler if statement. Um, but yeah, I'm not really worried about it too much. Hopefully we have tested this thoroughly enough that we won't have to um, come back in here and change anything. Okay, now I just need to comment that out. Okay, I'm just gonna scan through it one more time to make sure I didn't miss or accidentally comment some important code. Oh. Um, yeah, so just the debug. That's more strings. Okay, it doesn't. I'm just going to delete that. Um, uh, yeah, so don't need that data anymore. And then yeah, we comment that out. Don't need this whole class anymore. Okay, and then burst compiles on for everything. So I'm going to test this one more time with the burst compiler. It should run a lot faster. I don't know if we'll actually we won't be able to tell because it runs pretty much instantaneous. Excuse me, instantaneously anyway, but. And there won't be any debugs, but. Okay, at least there wasn't an error. And if we look. Okay, so yeah. Test one worked. Let's try test four. Okay, uh, there's something wrong there. Oh, I think it's. No, it's because I left that value in the debugger. Uh, yeah, so I need to just get off that and it should stop spamming me. So when we interact again randomly, there's nothing wrong. If I go here, you can see there should be a bunch of different 
entities two. Okay, well, there's a bug. Oh wait, no, I was reading tile two because I thought, oh, they have the same user, but no, that's user twelve, twenty-two, five, eighteen, thirty-one, eight, twenty-four. So yeah, it's gonna be hard. Can't really tell if. Oh wait, that user had two. Oh yeah, <laughs> I did. This. There's not one that. That was the first user that had two. Fourteen was that? Oh, sixteen. Okay. I see, I'm just going to find false positives because I can't actually remember what I've seen. But. Okay, so it still works. Um, when injecting randomly. Oh, okay. I just pressed it again, but again, I just left it open in the debugger. It seems to work pretty well okay so I'm pretty happy with that but yeah next time so I guess now we have the guesses so how the game will work is that it will give you a certain amount of time for people to submit guesses and then once it's collected all the guesses and the timer runs out it will pick um, one guess pretty much at random um, that random will probably be weighted by certain factors but um, it will just pick a guess and then reveal those tiles and then everyone who picked that had that guess will um, get some points so i guess that's what we'll work on next time will be the guest picking and that timer and then uh, revealing the tiles which will be a little interesting because we'll have to do some kind of like it's always interesting to work between the entity system and the rest of unity because they're not really like, they don't really talk very easily at the moment, so you have to kind of, um, I don't know the right word, not, not hack it, but you just got to work a little bit to get it to work. But anyway, um, and thanks everybody for coming by. I hope you have a great night. So this week is Thanksgiving week in America, and so I'll be off Thursday and Friday probably. I think I'll still stream tomorrow and Wednesday. At least that's the plan so far, but we'll see. Um, if everything goes well on Tuesday, I'm going to um, try to make something... Like somebody suggested to make a board game. So I'm going to try to make a very simple board game in Unity just in one day, and we'll see how far we get. I think it'll be something really simple, like you just move a piece along the board based on a dice roll, but that should be fun. And then Wednesday we'll work more on this. Um, but yeah, so I'll put some links in chat if you'd like to follow me on social media or Discord. Um, I'd like to talk to you, so feel free to. Um, and you can also check out the video description. We'll also have links there. But so yeah, until tomorrow, uh, I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.